guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how I happen to be studying neuropsychology right now and all the steps that I did to come to this point. So if you wanna know what I have to say about this, just keep on watching. Okay, first of all, I would like to make a small disclaimer and it's that I'm just gonna talk about my personal experience. I know for a fact there are so many different ways to become a neuropsychologist, but I'm gonna talk about my personal way. And I would also want to advise you guys if you are wanting to do this for a living or for a career that if you are able to talk to an advisor or someone that can actually explain to you the steps that you have to take within your country because I know from different countries the ways of becoming a neuropsychologist changes so I would personally advise you guys to go to someone that is able to explain to you what is the best way of doing those steps and that being said I'm going to start with my personal experience. So first of all, what I did, I did a bachelor's um, because right now I'm studying my master's and what I did as a bachelor was called liberal arts and sciences. That sounds a bit broad and it sounds even broad to me. But basically to sum it up, what I did, I study mostly neuroscience courses combined with some medical sciences. Um, the reason why I also chose medical sciences is because we didn't have enough neuroscience courses to be able to graduate. So I had to take extra courses aside from neuroscience, but I tried to keep them as medical as possible because for me, they're the more interesting ones. So as I explained in a video that I really did, that it's over here, that how I chose my career, I explained a bit more how I decided to, after my bachelor's, study um, a master's in clinical neuropsychology. Long story short, what I did is basically I thought of the one courses that I liked the most within my bachelor's and it happened to be neuropsychology. And I was doing already a lot of research within my bachelor's, basically having to go to the lab every other week, basically every week <laughs> for three years. Um, and I liked it, but I was willing to learn more and do something with people. Um, so that's why I knew that if I choose a clinical master's, I could be with patients and I could have that like face-to-face -face relationship instead of just being piped in a lab which is also pretty cool but for me it's not personally what I like the most so that's why I decided to combine psych neuropsychology with clinical and make it a clinical neuropsychology masters for instance once you're a neuropsychologist I know that there are basically mainly two paths that you can choose from so first of all with the clinical neuropsychologist that basically at least from my, from my experience it consists on someone that is in a hospital mainly and uh, has patients coming in and there are patients that had a trauma, patients with possible dementia, patients that had stroke and you have to run tests on them, different screening tests that you can um, use on them and to see how they perform. Um, as a matter of fact, it's not only focused on grown-ups or adults, but it's also focused on young adults and kids. So we also have different protocols for people that have issues in school, reading, writing, comprehension. We have different ways to study everyone from kids to elder people. Uh, so that would sum up how the clinical neuropsychology job could be. And then on the other hand, we have the research part. So you can be a researcher within neuropsychology. And that comes, it's not as different as I thought it could be, but you are basically also with patients. You have your subjects and their people as well. They're not cells and you are palpating them. And you also talk to them and you do a screening test on them, but it's different because you need to find a group of people that are suiting your study and you have to do running tests on them. And of course, you have to do all the data collection that comes along with the statistics, which is the thing that for me scares me the most because I'm not a huge fan of statistics. So basically these are the two paths that you can take being a neuropsychologist. I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. I tried to explain my personal experience and what I know from within the field. I also found a really interesting article that I'm going to link down below that explains a bit what is the role of being a neuropsychologist, how can you become a neuropsychologist and other questions that you may have that I didn't answer or that maybe explains it a bit more. As I said before, I know it, there are a lot of different ways and of being a neuropsychologist depending on the country you're in so look for what you can do for instance for me i didn't have an issue going to different countries just to pursue my career so be in the look for something else that maybe you don't find it within your country but maybe abroad there's a perfect master's or bachelor's or 
PhD for you. That was the end of the video. I hope that you liked it. Please don't forget to subscribe here down below. And I'll see you in the next video.